Ever wonder who's really in control when you reach for that extra slice of cake? It might not be you. It might actually be your gut bacteria. That's right. Your gut isn't just digesting your food, it's controlling what you crave. In this video, we're diving into the gut microbiome and how it could be manipulating your sugar cravings. First off, let's talk about what the gut microbiome actually is. Inside your gut, there are trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and even archaea. Sounds crowded, right? Well, these tiny helpers play a huge role in keeping you healthy. In fact, did you know that for every human cell in your body, there's about one microbial cell? Crazy, huh? Your gut microbiome starts forming early in life and is shaped by your diet, environment, and even your genetics. It helps with digestion, boosts your immune system, and keeps your metabolism in check. It's basically the unsung hero of your body. But when things go wrong, this balance can get thrown off, leading to a condition called gut dysbiosis. This occurs when there's an imbalance among the microorganisms in your gut. Normally, these microorganisms coexist in a healthy balance with different types working together. Dysbiosis happens when that balance shifts whether due to losing beneficial microorganisms or an overgrowth of certain harmful types. One of the biggest culprits of gut dysbiosis, you guessed it, sugar. Eating too much sugar feeds certain types of bacteria, and when they grow in numbers, your gut's delicate balance is disrupted, leading to a whole bunch of problems. This disruption can cause issues with digestion, immunity, and even your overall health. And that's not all. This imbalance might even affect what you crave. So how does this all work? How do the bacteria in your gut send messages to your brain and affect your cravings? Let's take a closer look at the gut microbiome. As I mentioned earlier, there are trillions of microorganisms in your gut, with about 90% of them being either firmicutes or bacteroidetes. Each prefers different foods. Firmicutes prefer carbohydrates and added sugars, while bacteroidetes thrive on fiber-rich whole foods. When you eat a diet rich in fiber, think legumes, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, you give bacteroidetes the fuel they need to thrive and multiply. But indulge in pizza, bread, or sugary sodas, and you'll allow firmicutes to flourish. Neither group is inherently bad, but when one becomes too dominant, it can lead to gut dysbiosis and health issues. Firmicutes are key players in breaking down carbohydrates into simple molecules, specifically short-chain fatty acids, which are then absorbed by your body and used as an energy source. Sounds pretty useful, right? Here's the catch. The more efficient firmicutes are at extracting energy, the more calories you absorb from your food. Over time, this can lead to heightened sugar cravings to fuel these bacteria. As firmicutes dominate your gut microbiome, they can push out healthier bacteria, creating a positive feedback loop. As they break down more sugars, your body craves even more sugar to sustain them. This cycle can spiral quickly. The more sugar you consume, the more firmicutes thrive and the stronger your cravings become. So that extra slice of cake you're reaching for, it might just be your gut microbiome demanding a little more fuel. So what's the relation between the gut and the brain? How is the activity in your gut communicated to your brain? Recent research has uncovered the gut-brain axis, a two-way communication system that allows your gut and brain to talk to each other. The key player in this communication is the vagus nerve, which runs from your gut to your brain, relaying signals about fullness, energy needs, and even food cravings. A crucial part of this communication occurs in your small intestine, which is lined with tiny, hair-like structures called villi. These villi are lined with several specialized epithelial cells, with one of them being enteroendocrine cells. The enteroendocrine cells act as sensors for what's happening in your digestive system by secreting hormones and signaling molecules that travel to the brain via the vagus nerve. The enteroendocrine cells release several hormones and molecules. For example, cholecystokinin, peptide YY, and glucagon, like Peptide 1 are secreted to send signals of fullness to the brain, reducing appetite. On the flip side, ghrelin and insulin are secreted to increase sensations of hunger and signal the brain that it's time to eat. 
Once these peptides activate receptors on the vagal afferent neurons, the signals are sent directly to the central nervous system. This process helps regulate gut function, feeding behavior, and other physiological responses. Thus, through the gut-brain axis, your gut microbiome can influence your cravings and eating habits. The connection between your gut microbiome and hormone levels is still being explored, but there are some intriguing findings. Research suggests that a healthy diet rich in fiber and low in fat and sugar can lead to a more diverse gut microbiota. In contrast, an unhealthy diet high in fat and sugar and low in fiber tends to reduce this diversity, resulting in gut dysbiosis. When your gut microbiome lacks diversity, it can disrupt the body's natural signals that indicate fullness. In simpler terms, diets that are high in fat and low in fiber may hinder the release of important hormones like cholecystokinin, peptide YY, and glucagon-like peptide 1 from the enteroendocrine cells we mentioned earlier. As a result, your body might not receive clear signals that say, you're full. This imbalance can leave hormones like ghrelin and insulin to exert their effects unchecked, increasing feelings of hunger and making it harder to resist those sugar cravings. There is also a link between gut microbiome diversity and obesity. Studies have shown that obese mice have a significant decrease in the abundance of bacteroidetes and a notable increase in firmicutes. This suggests that a higher ratio of firmicutes to bacteroidetes may be linked to obesity. Other studies indicate that alterations in gut microbiota can enhance the capacity to harvest energy from the diet, further fueling those cravings and contributing to a cycle of overeating. So, how can you keep your gut microbiome in check and curb those sugar cravings? The answer is simple. Prioritize a balanced diet rich in fiber. Focus on whole foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. These foods nourish the beneficial bacteria in your gut and help maintain that all-important diversity. But remember, you don't need to cut out sugar completely. Those microorganisms can be good too. It's all about finding balance. By cutting back on processed foods and added sugars, you can support a healthier gut, reduce harmful bacteria, and keep your cravings under control. Hopefully taking care of your gut will make it easier to say no to that extra slice of cake. Remember, your gut's health is in your hands, and every bite counts.